Here we are, here we are, our first day of Bedrock Guide Empires at War. And I have so many awesome things to tell you guys about. And today's guide topic is going to be about beacons. But before we talk about beacons, let's actually take a quick look at how this series is going to work going forward, because there's been some changes, some pretty awesome ones. So in case you missed the news, there's a big change happening. I missed the Bedrock Guide series, but not necessarily the world. Um, if you want to get more details about why the change occurred, I would check my Discord channel because I put a write up in there about it. But essentially, I, I miss guiding people, but I also love the Survival Empire world. So what better way to, I guess, move forward as a content creator and make content that I both enjoy and I think you guys will enjoy and then to combine these two things that I liked a lot, right? So we are now transitioning to Bedrock Guide Empires at War. For all of you guys that loved the Bedrock Guide content previously, you're going to like it even more now because we're going to make sure we cover some of these topics in more depth um, and I can cover a little bit more obscure topics, littler things that don't require big farms and things of that nature too, although we will do those as well. And at the same time, if you loved the Survival Empire series, nothing's going to change there. Everything's going to develop just the same. The brief synopsis for all of you first time joining this series is we're building up multiple empires in stages that are going to go to war with each other. We're in phase one of Empire One right now and getting close to the end of it. And at some point, you'll see a transition over to Empire 2, um, but that will not interrupt what we're doing with the guide. You will still have amazing guide topics in every single episode. So now let's get on to today's topic, which is the beacon, which I actually already have some in this world, but we're going to be starting from the beginning. And actually, I thought I had a beacon somewhere in a chest, maybe, possibly. Let me see if I can find it. Come on, beacon. Yeah, there we go. We do have a beacon here. So this is the thing that we're going to be talking about in today's episode. But before we can really go over it, you kind of got to know how to get it. So like I said, let's start from the beginning. We're not going to be using this one right here. We're going to get and make our own together. So our first step is to head out to a nether fortress, which I have covered in a earlier episode of the Bedrock Guide. So make sure you go back to that playlist if you want to see more about nether fortresses. But we're specifically looking for wither skeletons. And I have a good nether fortress in mind to go to that we visited earlier in the Survival Empire series. So I'm actually going to head out that way now because we need to kill withers uh -huh. to get wither skeleton skulls. We need to kill wither skeletons to get wither skeleton skulls so we can then kill a wither yeah that was a little backwards and here we go this is exactly where i wanted to be the reason why i picked this nether fortress to continually come back to is simply because a lot of it is over top of lava and with a lot of it being over top of lava that means that i have a better chance for wither skeletons to spawn and not having to worry about clearing out as many other spawns because on bedrock edition you do have a pretty hard limit on the number of mobs that can be spawned in a particular area at a time so if you can limit that in any way in my case by making sure there's less of other mobs around because there's less spaces for them to be then that's going to be the way to go um, i'm going to prep this area by putting little crossroads over top of each one of these I will even show you by doing pretty much something like this. It'll allow other mobs to pass through, but wither skeletons will not be able to get through. So I can always keep myself safe and away from potential death. So I'm just going to hang out here, kill a bunch of those guys, and I will work my way back over once I'm done. Okay, we have our three wither skeleton skulls here. If you don't already have some soul sand or soul, soul soil, go ahead and get that. And I highly recommend netherite gear, which I, I don't have because I died with all my netherite gear before. And in this um, in this series, I have a special add on expert plus mode that makes it so when I die, I lose all my stuff and I just haven't replaced it. So I'm going to go get a little bit of netherite gear action going on. I, I think I might have some ancient debris. I don't know. I'm going to go check um, if you don't already have that. Go ahead and get it. And it will be important to our wither fight, which we will kind of breeze over really quick since that's not the main subject of the episode. But I'll show you what my plan is. I mean, while we're out here, before I make my way back, should we check the chests here? We can find recruitment papers here, which goes with our add on that we have that gives us these uh, soldiers that we can add to the Empire. If you're new to the series, you might not be familiar with it. They're basically glorified armor stands, but they look really cool and they're going to help us out with staging our 
Hello? Staging our battles and uh, just making the place look and feel more alive later on. And we can find their recruitment papers to get them from the wandering recruiter in like various areas here, including bastions. So maybe I, mean, I've, I had a pretty easy time of just clearing this thing out. I'm sure we'll meet a little bit of resistance when we go in, but um, yeah, I think it's worth taking a look. All right, let's um, let's get up here and let's get ready to have somebody come try to smash us. Oh, I think I see a chest. Hold on. Mahaha. <laughs> Recruitment papers. Hey, we got one. Yes. Um, this will get us an archer. Awesome. Anything else in here? Oh, okay. A soldier and a knight. Archer and knight. And a knight. Awesome. Eventually, we're going to probably end up having like hundreds of these guys around the world and on the battlefield. So, oh, hell, hello. Like shooting fish in a barrel. Okay, also, I grabbed some additional things here. We have some iron blocks we have a pumpkin or a few pumpkins and i have some obsidian too i actually want to try this out a little bit but while i kind of dig down here just let you guys know let you in a little secret the bedrock wither has gotten easier in a couple of regards first of all when 1.18 came out we have all this deep slate down bottom the deep slate it's a lot more blast resistant so it makes it a lot better of a place to do this underground right before on bedrock edition Fighting the wither underground was not a good idea because the wither would just melt stone like it like it wasn't even there. It worked a little bit better on Java Edition um, because the wither isn't quite as um, active, I guess would be a good way to say it. Um, whereas on Bedrock Edition, the wither is overactive. But now that we got Deep Slate, that helps out quite a bit. So now we can fight the wither in a contained way. I could just go to like a, a end portal and just suffocate the wither there. But I actually kind of enjoy the fight a little bit. So that's why we're gonna go down here and we're gonna fight him. Um, also, the wither got a lot easier on Bedrock Edition recently because there is a change made to how uh, damage is calculated. So now your protection uh, enchantment on your armor actually makes the withering effect do a lot less damage. This makes a huge, huge, huge difference because before that was one of the things that Java Edition did and Bedrock Edition did not. So it made the Bedrock Wither incredibly harder because that withering effect would take your health down incredibly fast. Now, we don't have that. We don't have to worry about it. So a straight up Wither fight down here, if you have a little bit of help, isn't really that bad. Okay, so here's my plan. And I don't know if it's gonna work, so bear with me. I wanna make an obsidian cage for the Wither to go into. Now, the Wither on Bedrock, and I think on Java too, right? It can break obsidian, but it doesn't break it right away. So I think what we can do is use like a cage here for the wither, trap it for a short period of time and make it easy for us to get a kill, right? I think I want to block all of the above spots here. Yeah, that'd be good. And um, it should at least allow us, I think, to get the wither down to half health. And then from there, the battle should be pretty easy. Now, I do have all my netherite gear on. I have everything with, let's see, protection four, protection four, protection four. And that one's fire protection. I don't, do I need to, uh, we'll switch it out just to be 100%, right? Or no, my other gear is not um, netherite. We're not, we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep it the fire protection. I wanna keep my netherite on. And then what we'll do is we will place this here, here, and here. We will grab our skulls here and we need to, block up our area here this should keep the wither from escaping maybe we'll put maybe we'll put some blocks down on these four too right i think this will do the trick i really do so let's go ahead and let's place place and let's give ourselves i need a way to like go around just in case like he's back here or up here i need to be able to get around here so let's dig around this and even though i don't think i'm gonna need it i'm just gonna be extra cautious here I get myself a few totems of undying just to be on the safe side. Experiment, let's go. Whoop. Okay, back up. Let him do his explodey thing. And then we'll rush in there and see if we can get some hits on him somehow. Ow. Ow, I can't get him. I can't see. Oh, yep, he broke out already, but... Oh, no, now he's going up. Now he's going up. Okay. This plan did not work great. 
but that's okay. That's okay. We'll just shoot him down. No big deal. As you can see, our health is doing perfectly fine. My bow! And okay, now we got him down here. He will likely do the charge. I'm gonna let him just come towards the golems, um, which they will also beat up the, oh, ow. Okay, that actually hurt a little bit. We're gonna back up some, we're gonna back up some. Just do a little bit of regen. The golems are smacking him. They'll probably kill him anyway. Look, he's still, he's still trying to make his way to me. <laughs> They're just beating him up. I don't even have to do anything. Look, they beat him. They killed him all on their own. <laughs> oh, back up. Don't explode. Oof. Okay, and bada boom, we have the nether star. Let's go make our beacon. Okay, now that we have everything we need, we can craft ourselves what is arguably the most powerful block in the game. And bam, there we go. We have ourselves a beacon. Now, there's a lot to know about beacons, so let's take ourselves somewhere to actually build a beacon base and talk about it. So, the beacon. How do you use it? What does it do? What things do you need to use the beacon? We're going to go over all of those things right here, but this is it. This is the beacon right here. And as you can see, it's not really doing a whole lot of anything. It has it has some cool things in here, but I can't use it yet. That's because we need a beacon base and a beacon base is going to be made out of a variety of different ore blocks. You can use iron blocks, which I have here. You can use gold blocks. Uh, you can use emerald blocks or diamond blocks or even netherite blocks. And there are a few different tiers of beacon. You can make a three by three size beacon like this and put the beacon on top. And as long as it has sky access, meaning that it can reach all the way up to the sky, then it'll work. Now, keep in mind also in the nether, as long as you clear out all of the netherrack and different bits and things all the way up to the to the bedrock ceiling. So you clear out everything all the way up to bedrock. Your beacon can work in the nether as well. Now, if we take this three by three beacon and open it up and take a look, you can kind of see here this little bit of a representation here. This top level of the beacon is what we have currently, and it unlocks the use of speed or haste. Speed quite simply makes us run faster. So I can click over here. I do not have any other options. I can just click the one thing. I hit the check mark and now I do have speed. So you'll see once that kicks in, I am running faster than I normally do. Or I can put in and again, you can actually it shows you here what materials you can put in to change or activate the beacon. You do have to do that. Um, I can switch over to haste, hit the check mark. And now with the haste effect, I will actually mine faster. Now, this is all well and good, but maybe we want to move up in tier. So what we can do is we can get rid of our little beacon right here and we can increase this to a five by five. Now in doing this, you can use any blocks in combination, right? So I mentioned you can use gold blocks or diamond blocks or emerald blocks or whatever. They don't all have to be the same block. They could be whatever. But now that we have the five by five base, now we will fill in a three by three on top of it. Place our beacon back down. And now we have the next tier available. We have resistance, which makes us take less damage. And we have jump boost here, which actually allows us to jump higher. Now, if I'm correct, that thing jump boost here will let us will let us jump over a fence. I think it will. Yes, yeah, so you can see we can now jump over a fence with jump boost level one. But we want more. We don't just want these these cool like effects and additions to our playing of the game. We want to go bigger. So let's go up the next size, which is a seven by seven. We will make the next layer, the five by five, and we will add the three by three on top. Now we have access to strength, which will make us attack harder when we use an attack. So that's good. We can do more damage. Great if you want to fight the wither, you can set up a beacon close by and fight the wither. Um, or if you have any other situation, maybe a raid, you want to have a little bit more attack ability. You can add in a level four or above beacon and get strength and use it. But we don't want to stop at strength. We want to get to this over here. Secondary power. What is that? We are now going to a full sized nine by nine beacon. Oh, let's not mess that up. And we will upgrade this layer to a seven by seven. The next layer to a five by five. And then we'll add another three by three on top. Here's our three by three at the top now. And as you can see, if I back up here, we now have four tiers to our beacon base. We put this on top. And now not only do we have all of these unlocked, but you see a second option over here unlocked. Now I learned a little trick while I was researching beacons. This is a parity difference between Bedrock Edition and Java Edition is that on Java Edition, you can actually activate two of these primary powers at the same time. It's a little tricky, but what you have to do on Java Edition is let's say you want to have speed and jump boost. Well, I could click speed. That could click one of these over here, but then click back over here to jump boost. 
And if I activated a beacon and looked at my effects, it would show speed and jump boost. It would give me both. Unfortunately, on Bedrock Edition, that trick does not work. But what does work is we can click on any one of these and it will give a level two effect to the, the ability that we chose, right? So that speed, if we want to have a level two speed effect, we can do this. Once it kicks in, there it goes. Now look how much faster we're running. We are moving. We can do the same thing with the jump boost. Right here, right here, check, check. And now we can jump incredibly high. I think we, do we jump two blocks high? I think we jump two blocks high. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is awesome. Um, also, there's a new effect available. It's called regeneration. So if you're going to get in a hard fight, you can maybe load up resistance and regeneration together. And not only will you be able to fight off those mobs and take less damage, but you see my hearts are blinking down there. I'm also going to regenerate health faster, too. So it makes harder battles a lot easier to deal with. But the money maker here, the whole reason why you want to get yourself a beacon in the first place is this right here. Haste plus haste two. you combine these two things together. And as long as you have efficiency five on your tool, you can insta mine almost every block in the game. There's a few uh, exceptions like obsidian and deep slate. But for the most part, the blocks, they just melt away. They just disappear right in front of your eyes. If you need to collect a lot of material, stone, cobblestone, whatever it may be, dig a big hole for a farm or a build or whatever the case may be, you need to get yourself a haste two beacon because it makes things so much faster. Now this full beacon base that you see right here behind me, this costs you two full stacks plus 36 blocks of whatever type of ore block that you're going to use. So keep that in mind. If you need to make a beacon base, you also need to get a decent amount of a material. Copper does not count. So if you ask about copper, you cannot use copper. Iron is usually the easiest to do, but depending on what farms you have in your world, you may be able to do other blocks easily as well. Props to you if you make yourself one out of diamonds or netherite, because that is quite a lot of mining that you're going to have to do. But wait, there's more. I'm going to show some of you a trick that you may not know. You can actually combine beacon bases together to add multiple beacons on top. I do have other beacons here. I grab them from a little area over there. And what you can't do is you can't just place another beacon right here and, and have it work. It does not work that way. But there may be instances, and I'll give you examples later on in the video here, of why you would want more than just one beacon effect. So let's say on this beacon, I'm going to select case two, right? Uh, we can go over here. And we can just extend all of this down by one. So what we'll do is we'll make our pyramid one wider on each one of these little sections right here. And now I can add another beacon. I can put another piece of iron in here. And now maybe I want resistance and regeneration. Why not, right? So now, as you can see on the, the right hand side, oh, look at all those iron golems go. Uh, but you can now see I have multiple effects that are regenerating right now. So my beacon is giving me multiple effects. If I want to make this even bigger, I could extend it out this way or I could extend it out this way. We can extend this thing out to be about as large as we want to and get all of the effects at level two tier if we wanted to do so, which is absolutely awesome. Such a cool thing to do. Not a lot of people know about this, but now you do. So use that knowledge. But we can have a little bit of fun with our beacons too. What kind of fun you may ask? Well, I'm going to pick some flowers here. I have some glass in my inventory. I'm going to turn my flowers into dye and we're going to go to a crafting table and we are going to dye our glass. We'll make some yellow, we'll make some red and why not? We'll even make some panes out of it too. And what does this colored, these colored pieces of glass do? Well, they don't really do anything except look really cool. Because look, I can place a piece of red glass right here. And there we go. I have a red beacon beam. How cool is that? Or I could piece, place a piece of yellow stained glass right here. I could do a pane and I can make a yellow. Not only can I do those things, right? But I can maybe even, let's see if I build up here. Did it go up? Oh, it's there. You just can't see it. And then can I place this? Look, I can have multiple colors of beacon and you can't even see you can't even see the glass that it's going through. How cool is that? Because I have yellow glass right here and I have red glass right there, which is actually it's turning it orange. I didn't know it did that. Wait a second. That's a thing. I need to see if this is a thing on Java Edition. Here we are over on a Java Edition test world. I really need to see this. I really, really, really need to see this. Let's just do the same thing. We'll get some yellow. We'll get some red. Place a yellow piece down. It's expected, right? Place a red piece down. Ah, it does do that. That's super cool. 
This is something I did not know. And now that we've had a little bit of fun playing around with colors, because that was interesting. Now let's talk a little bit about the range of a beacon, because see, this thing doesn't just last forever. I can't go way out that way and still get the effect from this beacon. There's a limited range in which it'll work. Now, when you have a level four beacon, which is the only one we're really going to talk about now, because this is what most of you guys are going to use, that range is 50 blocks. So 50 blocks from here in all directions, north, east, west, south, whatever, all the sides, it goes 50 blocks out and it also goes 50 blocks down. Now, the big thing here is that it will actually extend up 384 blocks. So I can fly up here and continue to fly up here and continue to fly up here and I'll keep getting this beacon effect. It'll keep refreshing itself because it'll go up 384 blocks in the air. But again, it will not do that same. Oh, I wasn't even flying that fast. How did that happen? Oh gosh. That's scary, okay. Um, anyways, um, it won't extend down that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm gonna go get another, I'm gonna go get another totem. Remember, if I die on this world, I lose all my stuff I have, and I just upgraded another right armor, and I am not taking any risks, especially with how that, for whatever reason, wanted to kill me. Okay, much better. I feel much more comfortable. My heart's still beating fast, but in any event, what that means is if you're gonna use this beacon over a large area vertically, you probably just want to bury it as low as you possibly can. Like all the way down to the bottom of the world is going to be the best place to put it. If you have the desire to want to actually dig it down and put it down that far, then that's going to be the best place for it to go. Now we're actually going to take a short break from beacons because here in a little bit, I want to show you guys some like really effective uses of them. I want to show you the most common areas or times that you're going to want to actually use a beacon. But first, I haven't really got much building done lately and I've been really procrastinating over here. Um, you'll see I have RTX mode turned on right now. We'll, we'll talk about that, maybe even as a separate guide of its own in the near future. Um, but I like to use RTX mode when I'm doing building stuff because it just looks so good. Um, but we have all of these like variety of houses out here that we have no details on right now. And even some I haven't even like built out like the extensions to them and things like that like I did over there. So I think I'm gonna spend a little bit of time over here doing a little bit of building. I may even schedule some of this building around a stream pretty soon too. I would just like to make a little bit more progress over here. All right, me and stream, we had a good time. I've had a couple streams since I last recorded. And first of all, my big mess in here, I got rid of it. Those are all empty just for like quick, easy access to grab and go. And not only did we organize everything there, we, we got ourselves a lot of wood and through a stream and a little bit of time after I've made quite a bit of progress on the houses here. They're still not done yet, but we got all of the little like things, the bits and bobs and pieces extending out just to add in that differentiation from one house to the next and make them all look and feel unique. And I'm super happy with all that. But in the process on stream of getting myself some more rockets, I noticed a problem and I have I have a kit, I have a, a collection of things to take care of this and I don't understand how it happened. So let's look. Ah, there he is. I don't, I don't know how Wilson got here. Wilson's stuck. We need to get Wilson home. He's been rescued. He's been rescued. That's what we've done. We've rescued him. I also have one more task to do. For whatever the reason is, we've, we've lost we've lost our villager over at the toolsmith. So we need a new toolsmith, which means I need to take somebody over there and let them sync up with the job site. Are you? You're coming with me. You're coming with me on a slow journey in a boat. Okay, that's cool. We got a thunderstorm. Please don't strike me. Please don't strike me. Please don't strike me. I know you're scared, dude. Don't worry. We'll have you in there soon enough. Oh, whoa. I'm a little scared too. Okay, now that you are within range with these beds, they should now be part of the village, meaning that, oh, okay, yeah, you linked with it. That's good, that's a start. We need baby villagers. Hey, somebody did baby make. Oh, we got more. <laughs> we're just gonna, we're gonna wait for that to happen. In the meantime though, we need to go over some practical uses of beacons. Practical use number one, I actually left the beacon over here because on stream earlier, I was chopping wood and exclusively on bedrock edition, you get that haste to its effect when you are mining trees and they will actually insta mine. So I have a big forest that I've been trying to clear up and I can just simply come over here and zip my way right on up a tree, including 
chopping through these nice big dark oak trees we like to get the dark oak it is it is the best wood in the game let's let's be serious dark oak you can't beat it it looks good and it's so much better you can just insta mine the whole thing down in a matter of a couple seconds another one has to do with this location right here this is my general mob farm and we come over here to get gunpowder and other good amazing things and while i'm hanging out here especially if i want to afk here for a long period of time maybe i want to leave my my pc on overnight or something to get a whole bunch of gunpowder uh well the problem is that a lot of these mobs the skeletons the zombies they might spawn with thorns on their armor thorns is an enchantment that damages the person that does the attacking we're technically attacking them with our trident killer in there so what happens well well we take damage every so often and over a long enough period of time those little bits of damage they add up and we, we would die unfortunately death death would occur but not here because you see we have the strength effect not really a big deal but we have regeneration and resistance too so thorns is giving us less damage and we are regenerating health if we happen to run out so we can stay there indefinitely and it's thanks to that double beacon setup I showed you guys earlier. We got a double beacon base here, two beacons shooting up in the air, giving us those effects. It is super useful and without that, I would not be able to AFK at that farm. No way. Now next, I have a little tip for you. If you need to move your beacon from one place to another and like me, you have a way to get a whole bunch of blocks you can use for beacons like, oh, like um, iron blocks or emerald blocks or gold blocks, etc. Then if you need to take a beacon from one location to the other, take yourself the beacon, but don't take the base. Leave it if you need to come back to it. Cause I will be back here to, to mine out more and my beacon can reach a little bit further to get some more of these trees. So I'm gonna leave it here and we're gonna take our beacon to the next place I wanna show you. And that next place happens to be right here. This is one of my mine shafts. This is where I do a lot of my mining. I go down further and get diamonds, but also I wanted an area where I could just kind of quickly and easily come in and just get mass materials. So I have a beacon base here and I'll come in here and I'll activate haste two just like this. And as you can see, I've done a lot of mining already. We got stone. I think some of these are, are still empty-ish, right? Yeah, but uh, we do have a lot of things that we're collecting here. And we have a lot of room for additional storage. But I can come in here, and if I need a lot of stone, I just come in here and insta mine it. And hopefully not uncover a lot of water like I just did right there. But it's so nice to be able to come in here and just melt away all of the blocks and get a big return for a short period of time that you have to spend. And then as you saw over here, I usually set up a little base camp for myself to be able to bring my supplies over to and drop them in once I'm done. Usually I'll organize them, but I'm being lazy right now because I'm recording. Um, but yeah, I'll organize them into shulker boxes and when one fills up, I'll, I'll take it down with me and bring it up and come back down here the next time I feel like that I need to come back down and do some more mining. And I do believe that is all that I plan on doing in today's episode. If you learned something new about beacons, let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know what it was you learned and how you plan on using it. Did I forget to cover something with beacons? I don't, I don't think I did, but maybe I did. Maybe you know an interesting fact about it that I don't know and couldn't find. If so, drop that down in the comment section below too. If you enjoyed this uh, video, leave a like, click the subscribe button on the channel and consider leaving a super thanks in the video. If this video helped you out specifically, now that is just a small donation that goes towards the channel, goes towards keeping me a full-time content creator for you. Again, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.